In this video I talk about the most common problem with lever action toilets and I go on to describe the things you need to consider when you get ready to fix a problem which is to uh, change the siphon in the cistern. This is a toilet cistern, there's a siphon, there's the inlet valve and there's the overflow outlet in this one here. If you've got a toilet like this and the, the lever won't flush, you press the, the, down a few times and you just can't get the water to, to flush, or maybe you've got what's called a high level cistern, this is up on the wall and you've got a chain and again it, it just won't flush, there's generally only one explanation, the diaphragm in the siphon has, uh, has gone, has broken up. Here's a typical siphon, the handle is connected directly to this metal ceiling and when you pull this up, the diaphragm which is here is a layer of uh, plastic, it p pushes up, the water in the siphon which will be up to this kind of level is pushed up and over the, the siphon and flows out and, and, and that triggers the, the siphon action that empties the cistern. What happens when you've got your difficulty with, with flushing with the lever is that the diaphragm gets broken as it has done here and when you pull this up the water just flows through in, in between the, the, the cracks and it isn't pushed up over here. You'll see that this is sitting on a, a plastic framework. What that does is when, when you pull up, trigger the siphon and let go, as the cistern refills the water can push past this and fill the siphon again up to the level of the rest of the cistern. With all the siphons, the cistern empties till the, the water reaches the bottom of the, uh, the siphon, lets the air in, breaks the siphon action. But modern siphons have uh, apertures down the side, like this one with, with these blue buttons you can take out and what happens here is that when the cistern empties the siphon action is broken here or here depending where you take these plugs out and this is a dual flush as one as well the way that works is when you pull this up and hold you can see at the bottom of this pin here there are actually grooves down the side and that's where air gets in to break the siphon action at this level this is the standard kind of siphon you get these days, costs about uh, five or so, but if you feel like spending near 20 pounds and getting yourself a, a Dudley, this is a Turbo 88. Uh, when this is fitted in the system, if the diaphragm goes, take the lid off, put your hand in and pull out this yellow connecting plug. You can remove the siphon like that, change the diaphragm, you can get them for a fiver on eBay, and just put the bits together like that and there it's done. In recent years it's been allowed to have what's called an internal overflow. All the cisterns will have a separate uh, pipe in the cistern and if water level rises above that water will escape down and to a tube coming out of the wall to the outside and the point of this was so you can see if there's something wrong. With the internal overflow, um, you, and you can have the traditional overflow just blocked off if you've got one, but the inter internal overflow, if the water level rises too high, water will just carry on flowing out here into the toilet. So you're relying on seeing the water overflowing into the toilet to know there's something wrong. So in this cistern, we've got the water inlet valve, we've got the siphon and the overflow in the corner. And when it comes to taking the cistern off, you want to disconnect the uh, overflow here and the water inlet here. Siphons are measured from the level at which they sit on the cistern base, like this, up to the overflow level, which is here, and this one's uh, 8 inches. Uh, here's an inch ruler and this uh, uh, junction between the cap and the rest of the part is usually marked like this uh, is a handy way of measuring now this one says uh, eight and a quarter from where it will sit on the cistern up to there take off about a quarter of an inch uh, to get to the actual spill over level so this would be an eight inch siphon now you can measure that when uh, it's in your present system uh, with a, a ruler you could just 
measure to, to that line, taking into account, uh, taking into account this, uh, the blank bit at the bottom, or simply just use a, a tape measure like that, and that will give you the height of your uh, present siphon. It might be that you've got a, a really old uh, cistern. Uh, this one, for instance, works out at the 12 inches. I'm not sure if you can get them that tall anyway these days, but the water level was up to 9 inches. And what I did in this case was choose a 9 inch siphon because I knew that I'd be able to lower the water level enough so the water didn't go straight over the, into the siphon. I almost always fit 8 litre siphons because I know that with taller siphons, they have a large flush volume and, and I can lower that quite easily. I'm going to show you that in a moment. The, the, the taller ones, will, are really from older systems, have a flush volume of perhaps 9 litres and the new standard is 6 litres. So I take the opportunity to reduce the, the flush volume, especially if the customer is on a water meter. Water levels and cisterns are generally marked with a little groove along the side. This one here has let, just has the letters WL beside it. This one has a line with the marking 6L for, for 6 litres. That's a 6 litre flush. When you fit a new siphon, the water level may not come to the level you want. How do you adjust the cistern level? Well, first of all, check what kind of inlet valve you have. This one here, for instance, with a little float, is called a Torbeck. I'll show you that in a moment. And this one here has a traditional kind of float and a ball valve float on a long lever. All cisterns have a water inlet valve. They let the water in and they have a float which rises up to a preset level and when it reaches that level the float turns the water off. Uh, uh, this one, these, this type rises up and down. That's, that's a, another one. And this one has a, a little float like this. And the action of the inlet valve is quite separate to the action of the siphon which lets the water out of your cistern. So siphons aren't matched to inlet valves. You can have your traditional siphon and any one of these inlet valves in your toilet cistern. These inlet valves have different ways of altering the uh, cistern level. This one, for instance, has a, a, a rod that you, you turn that raises the float up and down. This one here, you squeeze this metal uh, part and you can raise and lower the float. This is a Torbeck here and uh, again with this one you can, some of them have a spiral and you can adjust the height there. This one you, you turn around and you can alter the height of it. And this one, the traditional one, I'm going to explain how you alter this one because this is the one you're most likely to find. Here you see a little white button when it's pressed in it stops the water flowing into the cistern through here and that happens when the, as the float r rises this button is pushed in by uh, th this part here. Now that's adjustable. The farther it sticks out the sooner it's going to meet that white button and switch the water off. It's got a little retaining screw here, the, the nut rather, which uh, may be tightened on so you want to, to free that then you can rotate this black part so that it comes out longer. Uh, it, it sometimes you need a spanner, but this one has a little slot at the end for a screwdriver. Turn it around and if you have the right position, you can really tighten that nut. So that uh, you, what you can do is you can get this to turn the water off at a lower level. You can find out your flush volume if you want by starting with a full cistern, turn the water off, make a mark at the water level, do your flush and, and mark the level of the cistern when the water stops flowing out. Then you can fill it with a jug, the measuring jug, and you could press mark the 6 litre level on the way up until you get to the mark that you've made for your full flush. And this will give you some idea of the sort of volume you get for a flush if you're adjusting it. 
High level and low level cisterns are the easiest to deal with because you don't have to remove them from the wall. They're the ones, high level is the ones fixed uh, up on the wall. You may have a, a pool chain. Lower level cisterns uh, have the cistern above the toilet and connected with a pipe like this. It might be part of a vanity unit and the cistern is hidden inside one of the units behind the, the, the toilet. What you do here is disconnect the nut here and this one as well and you should be able to just put, pull the uh, uh, siphon out of the uh, uh, cistern, disconnect the sealing from the handle and just do the reverse procedure to fit the new siphon. There are some details uh, about uh, removal and fitting which I'll discuss with uh, you in my uh, the next bit about close coupled toilets. Before you start work on changing a siphon, there are some things that are worth checking first. First of all, how is the cistern fixed to your toilet pan? Pans have two holes uh, um, a standard distance apart and bolts which go through uh, un underneath the, the pan, the, the wing nuts which tighten the, the cistern to the, to the pan. This is uh, one kind where the, the, there are holes in the cistern and these bolts go, go through from the top and are, are, are fixed like this before you sit the cistern on the toilet pan. Because the head of the bolts are exposed to water inside, this generally means that they're stainless steel and the wing nuts are easy to turn. This is the more traditional kind. The, uh, um, the bolts are held on by this plate which is fixed to the outside of the toilet and very often there's some leaking of water and these are just incredibly rusty. The nuts may be very very difficult to, to turn, you may have to lubricate them. One thing that can happen is that when they're so rusted, the top of this bolt has a, a square cross section and when it fits in there it won't turn round. But sometimes it's so, so rusty that this, this will just jump and you just can't begin to turn the wing nut because the whole thing just turns around. The thing to do in that situation is get a, a blade of a hacksaw like this, a metal blade, something that's flat all the way through and cut through the bolt. You may not be able to do it under the toilet if you can't get very good access, but what I've been able to do in the past is you can slip this, which is really quite thin, in between the cistern and the and the pan, and just cut through the bolt that way. You need to have some gloves or mole grip or something to hold the uh, blade, of course, so you don't cut through your hand at the same time. Uh, generally, there's a little bit of a gap between the cistern and the pan because they're separated by what's called a, a doughnut. One idea I've seen is to use a cordless angle grinder to cut through the, the bolt and wing nuts when the toilet's still in place. Cordless, so as not to bring electricity into the bathroom. But I suppose if you're desperate, you, you could remove the whole toilet, take it outside and cut the wing nuts off there. Donuts are what stop water leaking out uh, underneath the cistern when, when you flush. Uh, when you tighten the wing nuts, you pull the cistern and toilet pan together and this gradually gets squashed and forms a seal. Because it gets squashed over time it, it, it just gets squashed permanently and they're very difficult to reuse. So I would always buy a, a new doughnut, and the fact that I always fit a new doughnut on my jobs because it's just not worth fiddling around trying to reuse the doughnut if it's not in the right position. I mean, so that you might try marking the position of the doughnut to, to put it back in the right place, but in which case uh, you'd want to dry it off as much as possible and perhaps silicon and, and see if you get a seal. Uh, if you want to get a new doughnut, that's a kind of traditional kind. Uh, if you go to B&Q, they have t two kinds. One is this traditional sort like this, but as you see from this collection here, there, there are different kinds of uh, the, uh, different shapes of doughnuts you can get. B&Q also do this one, which is a, a bit bigger and would be able to uh, replace uh, bigger doughnuts like this although these two are perhaps a bit more of a specialized shape. If you can't reuse these, then you might need to go to a plumber's merchant to get them. 
If you've got rusty wing nuts, you've very likely got uh, everything else rusty as well, including the close coupling plate. So the, the answer to that is to buy a kit, it's called a close coupling kit, which gives you plate, uh, wing nuts, uh, and a donut, all, all in one package. And you'll need all of this. This siphon fixing nut can be very difficult to turn. You'll need perhaps some uh, water pump pliers or adjustable uh, uh, pliers like this with a 55mm grip. That's how wide the uh, spanner is. Some new siphons come with a plastic fixing spanner like this and uh, you should be able to remove the old one with this one as well. Check your handles in good condition. This one is pretty uh, rusty, but the fixing's gone. And very often this uh, lever arm is uh, broken as well. You can buy replacements quite easily. Uh, what you need to measure is the hole that the handle goes through. There are two diameters, either 20 mil or 16 mil. And tool station, for instance, sell three different types. The first two are for 20 mil diameter holes with different spindle lengths. That's this length here. So that's something to measure as well. Uh, the third kit they have is uh, this one, which they call an X type. And is, as part of this kit, they have what's called bushes. That's the one you need for a 20 mil hole, and that's one for a 16 mil hole. So with this particular uh, the kit you can fit either hole that you might have if you haven't uh, to taken your handle out and you're not sure what you've got. Two little points, of course if your handle is in good condition and you can unscrew the screw here it might be easier just to uh, unscrew that and slide it off instead of taking off the ceiling. The other thing is uh, you might be able to get the plastic handle separate like this if you want to keep your handle but uh, generally it's easier just to buy the whole handle set and you get everything that you need. You need to check cistern fixing screws. Some mo modern uh, close couple toilets uh, that don't uh, fix the cistern to the wall, but most do and they have two holes. If you take the lid off and look inside the two holes, the screws they use are traditionally brass because they don't rust. But sometimes uh, you'll, you'll see screws which are just ordinary seal screws, they got rusted, you, you can't unscrew them, the head just goes or something like that. And you may need a hacksaw to cut through the bolts in the back. Looking ahead, uh, if uh, you really want to put new screws in the same position, don't worry about that because you'll be able to silicon the system to, to the wall and fix it that way. You'll need to turn the water off, and by far the easiest way is, is if you've got an isolation valve just under the cistern, it'll look like that, or perhaps you've got a flexi. Uh, this can isolate the, the toilet and leave the, the rest of the house water operational. Uh, if you'll see a slot here, if it's in line with the, the pipe, it's on, you turn it uh, generally uh, one way or the other. If the slot is across the way, the water's off and you should be able to flush the toilet and it won't refill. If you're going to turn the water off at the main stop valve and water still wells up into the toilet cistern after you flush because you haven't turned the water off completely, you can solve that one by opening a cold main tap that's lower than the toilet inlet. If you've got an upstairs toilet, open the, the kitchen cold tap for instance. If you've got a downstairs toilet, maybe the garden tap, fix the wall outside is the place to do it. Just leave that open while you're doing the job and you won't get water welling out of the uh, inlet pipe when you take the cistern off. Some people have bathrooms and toilets filled under low pressure from a loft tank. You can check if this is the case by turning off your mains water and seeing if the cistern still uh, fills up. If you do, you need to find how you turn the water off. You may have one of these turn-offs in your airing cupboard, but an easy way of doing it, instead of just uh, emptying the loft t tank, is to use a couple of bungs. If you're a plumber, um, you might want uh, to get these because they're very useful. They have they, 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 they bung the outlets for 15mm and 22mm 
pipes if you look in your loft tank take the lid off get a torch and around the bottom you'll see the outlet points you may have more than one you just fit these in and stop the water flowing out when you flush the toilet uh, water can't leave the, the, um, the tank if you haven't got these and you're only doing a job once you can make your own get some you know, tissues like this roll it into a ball put it in a, in a poly bag and the, 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 uh, give it a twist and the, the, there's your bung when you flush the toilet the, the pressure of the water trying to leave the tank pushes this into the outlet and stops the water flowing but make sure that this is far bigger than the outlet you don't want this to get sucked into the, into the pipe and really cause some problems but you might already have a flexi connecting the water inlet to the cistern and these have usually a, a rubber washer which can be reused just refit the, uh, the, the flexi but with a type like this they always have a, a red washer you can buy them in packs and uh, I always fit a new one because when I'm unscrewing this nut if you've got an older washer in there it's wet and soft and it very easily disintegrates so I, I take this off and clean this up and fit a new washer like this you may have to buy a pack but they're not very expensive finally what I'd really do especially if you haven't done this before take a photo of the front showing the angle of the lever because that can be useful when you're refitting and also a photograph of the inside of your cistern